What a do, Scooby Boo, it's your boy Shawnee B Gaming, and today we are going to be going over the 7.6 update notes. And it's a very exciting patch because they are finally making some changes to Solo Lane and they are releasing the new God Cthulhu. So let's go ahead and dive into the item and God changes. Warrior's Blessing. The Solo Lane has received quite a bit of feedback lately. The main thing we hear from players is that there are not enough ways to leverage advantages over your opponents. This lane is defined by one-on-one -on -one combat, but in a world where no one really wins, the lane feels stale. We are starting to address this through shifts to Warrior's Blessing, heavenly decreasing its sustain and mitigation features, and replacing that with God-only bonus damage. We have significantly more changes planned for solo lane in future updates, but we feel no need to hold this one back when players so clearly crave it. We will be watching the impacts of this change closely and intend to use lessons learned to guide future decisions regarding this role. So Warrior's Blessing no longer provides 3 flat damage reduction, now provides 10 magical and physical protections, the decreased health and mana heal from 40 to 25. When the health and mana heal trigger, the target hit will take 25 true damage. This damage occurs only one per ability. Evolved Warrior's Blessing has been adjusted to match the changes made to Warrior's Blessing. So once upon a time, there was an item called Bluestone Pendant, and it would do 60 true damage over 2 ticks over 2 seconds. And this allowed Warriors to just feel extremely strong in the early game. So it looks like they are taking part of Bluestone Pendant. It's going to be 25 true damage over one tick instead of 60 over two. But hopefully this will really spice up the solo lane. I'm looking forward to this change. I think this is probably going to be my favorite change of the patch. So Baron's Brew. Health and Mana Chalices underwent a change allowing their duration to stack with some failsafes built into the fountain to prevent abuse. Baron's Brew functions similar to these items, but works on the old system. Baron's Brew will now match health and mana chalices. Baron's Brew now stacks in duration, but is cleansed upon entering the fountain. This behavior matches health and mana chalices. So, the katana. Junglers often come in two varieties. Those focus on rushing early penetration and power, while others want to rush basic attack focused items. We want to make sure that there is a 650 gold cost choice for both. Katanas build into core basic attack focused items like Haste and Katana and the next item below, Golden Blade. So Katana is getting a price reduction from 700 to 650. So now whenever you leave the fountain with the Katana and a starting item, you're going to have 150 gold left over which will allow you to buy 3 potions instead of 2. Golden Blade. Golden Blade serves as a way to give cleaving damage to basic attack gods. While it has a long history, the limitation to melee only with our past balance has left it underwhelming. A lower cost and a small boost to attack speed should make it more attractive and allow for some more creativity for gods that can use it. So they decrease the cost from 2200 to 2000 and they increase the attack speed from 15% to 20%. So movement speed is being addressed in this patch. There's a bit of an issue where if you just stack only movement speed, you're like unbelievably fast and it can be frustrating slash meme-like. Movement speed can be a fun but very powerful stat. When it becomes too easy to stack and build, it can disrupt the pacing of not only rotating around the map, but combat pacing. We begin seeing a rise in builds utilizing these items together, pushing the boundary on what an always on movement speed boost should be. We are taking the edge off a select few items to keep these builds from falling into meme or frustrating stages. So all these items that we are about to list are getting a small reduction in movement speed. Traveler shoes and Talaria boots are going from 25% movement speed to 22%. Winged blade, relic dagger, toxic blade, and witch blade are all getting decreased movement speed from 10% to 7%. That also goes for Adventurous Blade. Now we are at the God Changes. Amuzin Cab often buzzes around meta consideration, flying into the spotlight of off small shifts. Since his last round of nerfs, however, he has struggled to find that type of opportunity. 
Hive placement is key to a lot of his strength. In highly mobile fights, he can often find himself outside his network. A reduced cooldown on Hive and a boost to Swarm's overall scaling will give him a stronger sting while teamfighting. Note, Bees was nerfed to 5 base damage a few patches ago. Upon closer inspection, it seems like the nerf was not implemented. Rather than implementing the change and nerfing him now, we plan to just fix the text. So they fixed the text issue that listed the bees as doing 5 damage, it's actually doing 9, and it seems like they want it to stay at 9. Hive is getting a decreased cooldown from 14 seconds to 12 seconds. Swarm is getting increased power scaling from 70% to 80%. So I think all of these are great changes for AMC, and hopefully he is played a little bit more. Baba Yaga. This chaotic witch has been stirring up some trouble since her last round of buffs. While still underperforming, she is much closer, and we expect as players are able to explore her kit without as many bugs, we will see her rise some more. We do not, however, want to further improve her usability to aid this process. Home Sweet Home has a minimum range to prevent throwing a witch fire bolt directly underneath her. We are decreasing this so players who are directly on Baba Yaga can still be threatened. She can also now move at full speed in all directions, which makes her an equal threat while retreating as she is chasing. Finally, Blast Off could now, can be interrupted and go on cooldown before providing any effect. It is being updated to provide benefits immediately, providing more reaction for Baba Yaga and preventing it from going on cooldown before it has done something. Creeping Cabin. Fixed an issue where players were not colliding with the cabin. This is intent. Player movement should be blocked to prevent hiding in the cabin at all times but projectiles should pass right through home sweet home decreased minimum firing range from 10 to 4 baba yaga is now immune to backpedal and strafe penalties while inside her cabin blast off now has a knockback immunity and damage reduction during the pre-fire animation so you can't get canceled out of it by a knockup these are some interesting changes to the magical hunters so with chronos when Oleron was released, his basic attack projectile speed was set to 110, matching Hunters. We are making these same changes now to Kronos, Sol, and Freya. This should keep their basic attacks feel more Hunter-like and create a consistent playstyle across the role. Kronos has separately been underperforming, seeing a drop at variety of skill levels we wanted to highlight a strength of his in lane boxing, accelerate, Immediate burst of speed gives Kronos flexibility when it comes to boxing and with a small buff with become a stronger and more defining strength. General, increase basic attack projectile speed from 100 to 110. Accelerate, increase initial movement speed from 15% to 25%. So a small little buff to Kronos, hopefully he'll get picked a little bit more. Fenrir. Through a few different metas, maps, and item changes, we have not seen Fenrir really grab hold. It feels like this god really never will be released. Last time we really did see him was when he was played in the support role. It was awesome, but not really his intent, and we it's not something he excels at anymore. To boost his presence as a jungler, we are decreasing the cooldown on Fenrir's primary jungle clear ability. Ragnarok might be approaching yet again. Brutalize is getting a decreased cooldown from 14 seconds to 12 seconds. Freya is getting the same little buff to her basic attack projectile speed of getting that increase from 100 to 110. Ganesh. Ganesh focuses on removing barriers and uplifting his team. Turn of Fate provides a strong damage stem to his allies, but is difficult to, difficult to really apply without minions nearby to stack its effect. Turn of Fate will now provide two stacks when hitting a god, which is a more common target when the team fighting phase begins. Hitting a god with Turn of Fate provides two stacks of the damage buff. I think that is a great little change to help address Ganesh, and hopefully that will improve his stats all around, or just improve his viability. Guan Yu. Guan Yu's passive encourages consistent fighting once it has become active. It does not convey the information needed to make smart combat decisions. Guan Yu will now slightly flash as this passive is going to fade to let Guan Yu players know if they are about to lose this effect. Painless. 
when this passive is about to fade an additional FX will play, fixed an issue where some skins were missing the passive effect entirely. Isis's update during last year's midseason pushed her to the top. For some time afterwards, we repeatedly nerfed her, and today she struggles to have a strength that allows her to stand out among other mages. We are reverting a nerf to Wind of Gust with the focus on her early pressure being her standout strength. So Wind of Gust it was on a scale of 30 to 110. Now it is going to be on a scale of 35 to 115. Nemesis. Nemesis has clearly had the scale stacked against her lately. Even after recent buffs, we failed to see much movement in her metrics. And player feedback was clearly unsatisfied with these changes. We are, adding a, we are adding quite a bit of potency to her passive, making each single stack significantly more impactful. So Scales of Fate increased power gained and power lost from 5% to 7%, and they decreased the max stacks from 4 to 3. It used to gain 20% uh, power gained and power lost over 4 hits, and now it gains 21% over 3 hits. So earlier, you would have to hit three times to get about 15%, and now with the changes, if you hit twice, you're already at 14%. So I think this is a good buff for Nemesis. It allows her to still maintain her identity and her functionality, but allowing her to get her damage off just a little bit quicker. Nuwa. The Clay Soldiers have taken notes from Artemis' Tusky and are coming to the battleground with some smarter tactics. The increased range is the only direct buff, allowing these soldiers to more reliably charge when Nuwa marks someone at max range. Outside of this, they will be more responsive to enemies entering combat, won't get stuck trying to attack, and can more quickly face and charge their enemies. Sticking closer to targets will also assist lining up the Shining Metal combo. Clay Soldiers. Increased charge range from 25 to 30. Fixed an issue where clay soldiers wouldn't recognize players entering their line of sight for a significant amount of time. Fixed an issue where clay soldiers would attempt to basic attack rather than charged. Fixed an issue where clay soldiers could be stuck attempting to basic attack when they should be charging. Clay soldiers now rotate much more quickly, allowing them to charge their targets faster. Clay soldiers will now try to stay closer to their targets. So Sol, she is getting the same basic attack projectile speed buff as the other magical hunters and then she is also getting a buff to unstable manifestation increased magical power bonus from 0.8 to 1% so now it's going to scale from 20% to 25% Terra Terra has a large wind up for her first basic attack which made utilizing her passive difficult we want to make a stronger option for players who are skilled at utilizing this passive to weave into their combat. Decreased pre-fire time for the basic attack on her chain from 0.5 seconds to 0.3 seconds. Post-fire has been increased from 0.5 seconds to 0.7 seconds to ensure the basic still is 1 second. Zong Kui Zong had a short period of complete meta dominance which resulted in a rather heavy nerf to his passive and his tankiness. This has harmed Zong Kui's identity as the battle mage and meta shifts since then have pushed his metrics even further down. We feel comfortable at this point to completely revert the change hoping that this mage can be more than just a ghost of the past. So Demon Bag decreased max souls from 60 to 40. Increased magical and physical protections per stack from 0.5 to 0.1. So now the total protections are going to be 40, where they were previously 30. So Cthulhu is coming out this patch, and it looks like they already had to balance him a little bit. So this is from the PTS balance changes. Cthulhu's rushing tear is going to reduce magical power scaling from 40% to 30%. So it's just doing a little bit too much damage. Descend into Madness, reduce initial hit damage from it was on a scale of 160 to 340, now it's on a scale of 150 to 330, and it was doing a 50% magical power scaling, and now that's being reduced to 40%, so that got reduced in the flat numbers and the scaling, and then Sever, 
reduce damage from 130 on a scale to 350. Now it's going to be reduced to 120 all the way up to 340. So that is it for the item and god changes. Let's go ahead and take a look at the skins and then we'll get to the other changes coming this patch. So let's go ahead and take a look at the skins. First up we have the Sin of Greed Fafnir. At first glance I thought this was a Hun Bat skin. Let's go ahead and take a listen to the voice back. Slay the minions, get their gold, then crush their gods! Up next is the fun Pocalypse Hachiman. These two skins are both grim omens. Let's go ahead and give the Hachiman a listen. For every person I slay, I take something of theirs to keep as a trophy of my victory. <laughs> Up next is Miss Senshi Bologna. What does our club hunt, you ask? Ghouls, demons, monsters, the bigger the better. And then we also have the striking Machina Ymir. I think this is a fantastic skin. For millennia, I have existed with a single purpose. Aid and protect. Then we also have the nautical legionnaire Achilles, which is going to be available in the Thousand Fathoms chest. I am royalty, and they best show me the respect I deserve. Up next is secondly... Or up next is debatably the second best skin of the patch. You smell that? <laughs> Smells like this battle needs a bold, daring, and super cute leader. Freedom Retriever Anubis, ladies and gentlemen. And then we also have the Presidential Punisher, Yanis. Heed my warning. The dead shall not die in vain. Then we also have the Cosmic Horror Cthulhu. Sweeping under the water. Descending from the sky, lingering in the minds of the mortals, I wait, I watch, I hunger. And then we also have the Ascended Cthulhu, and this is the Season Pass 2020 recolor. <laughs> And then we also have his mastery skin. So let's go ahead and take a look at the release schedule. They already released the bonus update for Final Boss. And then today, June 16th, they are releasing Cthulhu, the Grim Omens Chapter 4, the Thousand Fathoms chest, and the New Independence chest. And then the bonus balance will be coming out on June 30th. So Project Olympus, we're going to kind of glance over some of this stuff. They are increasing the punishments um, for reporting. They changed some UI things. Gameplay, I think this is an important one. Added health point numbers and health bars for jungle camps and minions. I think that will be interesting. Hopefully that is a helpful change. Some bug fixes in the UI fixed an issue where match history was unable to be opened on console. It is still a known issue that players with hidden profiles will not be able to view their worshippers or their history. Fixed an issue where opening the item store and clicking search field would stop movement. Assault. Fixed an issue where players could not teleport to their friendly tier 2 tower. Gods. Heimdall. Fixed an issue where Heimdall would be granted permanent vision of his opponents. Nike. Fixed an issue where Nike was not knocked back immune while channeling barrier formation. Baba Yaga fixed an issue with Elder Jin Baba Yaga using base FX on basic attacks. Fixed an issue where she would T-pose while Titans were dying. I don't think that was a bug. So let's talk about the changes to Arena. Along with the arrival of Cthulhu comes the arrival of a signature map. The Arena map is receiving an art update to match this deep sea god. The map itself will now be plunged into an underwater abyss. Additionally, there will be one change to the mode's mechanics. Minions will now provide tickets as long as they were damaged recently by a god instead of last hits. Applying such weight to last hitting in this mode often led to confusion about ticket leads caused by minions randomly dying to other minions, even when under fire from multiple god abilities. The experience should feel more consistent now. 
Assist on enemy minion deaths now deduct tickets from the opposing team. Visual changes, environment, and NPC art update. All environment art update to the new underwater theme. Buff camps, order, abyssal minions and minotaurs, and then chaos is cosmic minions and minotaurs. So in duel, duel is focused around outplaying an individual opponent and pushing that advantage. Getting a level lead could however result in a situation where a single death could create a long respawn time that allowed for a behind enemy to suddenly win. Losing with a lead should give your opponent momentum, but not fully negate winning for 10 minutes. We are adjusting the respawn rules to reduce the punishment while still letting players who won the fight from behind have opportunities. So they reduced the level factor in respawn times by 50%, they increased match time factor by 30%, and they capped maximum respawns at 45 seconds. I think these are great changes to duel. I'm not much of a duel player myself, but I do feel like more counterplay if you die is going to be very helpful. So in Conquest, the last thing that we are going to be talking about in today's video, in conjunction with some big changes to solo lane itemizations, we are now increasing the impact that Totem of Ku has this update, and likely more updates in the future will continue to incentivize aggression in the solo lane, as Totem is a key way of rewarding that type of play. So they increase the team Y gold bonus from 20 to 25 on Totem of Q. So solo lane is going to be really spicy after this update. They're reworking the Warrior's Blessing, so now it does a little bit more damage and you're a little less sustained. And they're also kind of increasing the rewards or contestion points in solo lane. Well, that is going to be it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you feel like you learned anything or you enjoyed this at all, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, please subscribe. If you ever want to see a game of a particular god played, please just let me know. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you had a good time. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.